So I built a trophy room and it turned out really awesome. I love it. And I took a time lapse of everything that I did in here. And I want to show you that time lapse. So I'm going to show you that right now. It's just a couple minutes. And then I'm going to walk around and show you everything in here real quick. Um, the room turned out great. I hope you like it as much as I do. All right, so that's how it all went down. Um, I did everything myself. I was gonna try to get somebody to do it, but I was like, I'll, I'll just end up doing it myself and saved a bunch of money. Uh, turned out great. So now I'm gonna show you everything that's in here and real quick. First of all, this is not all my stuff. I have my two biggest public land deer are in the living room still. That big eight point I shot in the mountains and the nine point I shot in game zone two a couple years ago. All my ducks are in the house. I have one bull elk from three or four years ago in my office at work from New Mexico. It's a really nice bull. And my biggest mule deer buck is in my office at work too, along with a peacock bass and a couple ducks. So I didn't put everything in here. I also left plenty of room, as you can see, plenty of room for uh, more additions. So I have my Ibex coming. My Ibex is gonna go right where this picture is. This is a picture of a really big bull, probably like a 370 bull I shot, or I, I saw in New Mexico while I was deer hunting. And I took that picture and had it blown up. But my Ibex is gonna go there. My Ibex is gonna be a half body mount. My Ibex cape actually went bad. Um, it dried with some issues and the cape went bad. And by contacting my outfitter and another taxidermist here in the, South, or in the United States, I'm going to be able to get another cape and it's not only going to be from Tajikistan, but it's going to be from the same concession, the exact same Valley I shot mine out of. So it's pretty lucky it all happened like that. Um, so it's going to go right there where that is. And I'll figure out what to do with that picture. Um, still waiting on my mountain goat. My mountain goat hopefully will be done in a couple months. Uh, it's going to go in here. I'm waiting on my all dad Ram that I shot this past year. It's going to go in here. And I'm waiting on my big bull elk, the real big one, the 374 bull. Um, it's gonna go like right here, across from my wife's big bull right there. So I'm gonna have bulls on each side kind of looking towards the door. Uh, so now I'm gonna walk around and kind of show you guys everything else we got going on in here. Uh, it's a good bit of stuff, but I can tell you real quick, I can tell you everything that, that's in here where it came from, so that's pretty cool. All right, so I already talked about that bull, uh, that picture of that bull. There's a video on my channel, and you can see that bull, but he was a giant. So that right there, let me see if I can get a better picture of that. That is a Joel Pilcher original artwork. Uh, it's called Uphill Battle. If you go on his Instagram page, there are videos of him painting that. And Caitlin won that picture uh, in a giveaway by Mountain Ops. That was the grand prize. That thing just showed up at our house right around Christmas time. And Caitlin texted me, she's like, did you 
buy this? And I was like, no, I don't know what that is. But I looked and you can see right here is Joel Pilcher's sign and that's the original. So if you go on his page and scroll down a little bit, you'll see him drawing that. And he, if you don't know who Joel Pil Pilcher is, his Instagram is Joel Pilch and he's probably the best charcoal um, wildlife artist out there right now. Fantastic stuff. I mean, really, really, really good stuff. So that's the original, like the one you see draw him drawing on his Instagram, that's it. Um, it's pretty cool that Caitlin won that and we needed somewhere to put it. So we stuck it in here. All right, up top here, these are all South Carolina bucks that I've killed over the years. Um, just cool deer. I hung up some rattling antlers. That's Caitlin's first turkey that she shot with her dad back when she was in like high school or middle school or something. I uh, got three bass here that I have mounted. Um, all are between, uh, let's see, that was seven three seven nine eight two something like that uh that's how much they weighed that's my sitka blacktail buck that buck just missed boone and crockett he's a dandy buck uh four by four with eye guards where in south carolina you'd call him a 10 point but uh awesome deer that hunt was so much fun and hopefully i'm going to shoot another one of those this year because i'm going back to alaska um that is my big fall bear i shot with my buddy trent up in Idaho, chocolate bear, really big bear. We actually didn't measure him, but uh, he has actually absolutely massive paws. And you can see how big my hand is. And I wear a size 12 and a half ring to just give you guys some idea, but really big chocolate bear. So now I've killed a chocolate bear, cinnamon bear, and an all black bear. So now I'm hoping to get a blonde bear. That is a red stag from New Zealand. He was like 335 inches, 337 or something. And I am actually leaving here in a week or two to go back to New Zealand and hopefully shoot another one of those. Uh, these are some sheds. That's a moose shed, a couple of big elk sheds from New Mexico. The, the moose shed is from uh, Maine. Uh, some whitetail deer sheds. Those are all from South Carolina that I've picked up. For all, uh, all, those, all those are off public land, I believe. That is my first ever mule deer. I got him mounted. He's not a giant, but that is my first one, and he's in velvet. And mule deer are cool, and that deer kind of meant a lot to me because that's my first mule deer, so I got him mounted. These are three New Mexico, or excuse me, those are two New Mexico bulls, and then that is my Idaho early season bull that's still in, in half velvet. Uh, you can see the velvet hanging off of him here and still on that end, so that's pretty cool. This is a South Carolina alligator. I think that gator was nine feet, two inches, and focus, that is his skull right there. That is my Neil Guy antelope. These two signs, what's cool about these signs, I found those signs in a river when, I don't know, it was in high school or the beginning of college, my buddy and I were fishing in a river and uh, we were fishing along the edge of a wildlife refuge and the bank had eroded and that sign had fallen all the way in the water. And we pulled it up out of the river, put it in the boat and brought it home. And then, I don't know, however many years later, I drew a special permit to hunt Neil Guy on public land on a national wildlife refuge. And those signs were all over the place where I was hunting. And that's what's so cool is when I saw those signs, I was like, if I kill a Neil Guy, I'm gonna get it mounted and I'm gonna put those signs beside it. And that's really cool. <clears throat> Across the bottom down here, I wasn't gonna hang up all my Euros. I like making European mounts, but um, you know, I do them all myself. And I figured that was cool. I just lay, lay them down there. So that's a South Carolina private land, private land, public land, private land, public land, Arkansas public land, New Mexico public land. That's a muley, obviously. That's off of public land in Canada, which is called Crown Land. That's the one I shot on my mountain goat hunt. And that is my Montana muley. And then up here across the top, all of these whitetail are off public land I've shot over the years. Um, that is a fallow deer that I found shed hunting when I was in New Zealand. I shot my stag and had a couple of free days. So I went shed hunting and I found a shed, a couple of sheds from a... Uh, a red stag, but I found a deadhead fallow and they let me have it. Uh, that's a really big buck. I shot at my buddy Justin's 
old buck, I should say, a couple years ago. And that little dinky one, that is my first buck ever. And that is my second buck ever. So this is my wife's big bull that she shot in New Mexico a couple years ago. You can see right there, it's broken. It's got a matching extra that's broken. So that bull was probably, I would guess, mid 340s, maybe even 350 before he broke off those extras. But he's a dandy bull. He's got massive thirds, like 24 inch thirds or something crazy like that. Uh, but a really nice bull. And uh, my friends Kelvin and Justin mounted him up for Caitlin and we just got him back. He looks great. That is my cinnamon bear that I shot this past year in Idaho with my buddy Greg and my buddy Trent. It's a beautiful hide and I'm gonna start hanging them up like that. So Caitlin and I are going bear hunting in Alaska this coming year. So hopefully we'll shoot a couple jet black ones. We're gonna hang them up like that right beside it. This is my first ever bear, excuse me. This is my second ever bear, but this is a South Carolina bear and had a really pretty coat, probably a five and a half foot bear, probably pretty average for South Carolina. We do get some big ones here, but that's just a pretty average bear. And uh, I got a rug made, so I got to put in here. I bought a gun safe, which was important, bolted it to a floor. This is a concrete floor. So <clears throat> I drilled all the way through and ran some big lags all the way in there to bolt it down. That is the only buck I've ever killed on opening day in South Carolina in the low country. It's a eight point, He's in velvet. He's 19 and a half inches wide, which is pretty cool. It's a great buck. Up here across the top, got a couple pigs, uh, some alligators. That's Caitlin's alligator. And these are mine. That one was nine two, that one was 10 foot. Big mule deer shed, three bears. Two of those are from Idaho. One of those is from South Carolina and another big shed. Um, this room, what I did was I closed it in. And as you can see, uh, there were pylons on that side over there, so I put six by sixes up, stained everything. These are panels, wood pa or, or brick panels that I put up, and that door used to be the entrance to the house, so I pulled that off, framed around it, put these panels up because I thought it'd be con cool to have some contrast between the wood and the concrete, or excuse me, and the brick. Plus, there's brick along the bottom, so I thought it'd all kind of go together. But underneath here is plywood when I pulled off the siding. There's plywood under there. Uh, insulated everything. I did not run any ducts in here, any duct work in here. So I bought an air purifier and I just run that in here. That cleans the air, obviously, but it also keeps some air circulating so it doesn't get stuffy in here. I, the cheapest boards I could find, those were fence pickets, six foot long fence pickets. I knew I was going to use those. Put those up and then get some, got some rough cut one by sixes framed around the door. Let my wife pick out that door and put an electric lock on it so we could uh, let our in-laws in and everything without giving keys to friends and all that kind of stuff. People come over. Um, but that's the room. It turned out pretty good. I'm, I'm planning the way my mountain goat is facing. I'm going to move my Neil guy, I think, to there. And then put my mountain goat there my Audeb below it or something like that. And then, like I said, the Ibex is going to go right here. And then right here is going to go, is where my big, my big bull will go. So that's it. One other thing I didn't talk about is I got the brightest light that Home Depot had and wired it, put it in there. That thing is insanely bright, but it's the only source of light I got in here, except for the, I bought this lamp out of off of Amazon that's got this night light that we can leave on all the time. That looks like a lantern and I thought it kind of fit the uh, overall look of the room. And I've actually got some pieces of wood, old fence posts and stuff that I'm polyurethaning right now that I'm probably gonna like put in some corners or something to kind of make it look more cool. That's, that's an old fence post right there that I polyurethaned. And then my buddy Chad had this idea that he saw somewhere and this used to be a door to a closet. Well, it's still a closet. It's got like my freezers and stuff in it because it's got two big chest freezers for meat in it. But that's canvas and I put that there to kind of look like a canvas tent, but it makes it so much easier to go in and out. And like I said, it fits the look of the room a lot better. But this is everything that I have in here. This is my room all finished and I'm planning on trying to fill it up. Uh, I got some fun hunts planned this year. I know I'm going to Alaska in the spring and I'm going back to Alaska in the fall because I drew a elk tag in Alaska, which is a really unique opportunity. It's probably the, hunnest, the hardest elk hunt in the world. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun, but also 
I can hunt those. I can hunt Sitka blacktail while I'm there too. So hopefully I can kill a hard horn Sitka blacktail and a Roosevelt elk. Never killed a Roosevelt elk. Still waiting on some other draw results for the year. So I have a feeling it's going to be a good year. I'll find some stuff to hunt if I don't draw anything. Uh, but my trophy room is complete. It looks really cool. Um, one more thing, a big shout out. Kelvin Phillips at Phillips Plantation, Kelvin and Justin mount all of my deer. Uh, so all they do all of this stuff. They mounted my Neil guy. They mounted the Caitlin's bull. They mounted all the whitetail in here and my red stag. So uh, Phillips Plantation, they do really good taxonomy work. And then that bear right there and my Ibex and my mountain goat are getting mounted by Upstate Taxidermy. That's in Chesney, South Carolina. That's Blake Thompson. He's a really good guy. He does fantastic work. And um, so give him a call if you're interested in getting some stuff done. He does all kinds of stuff. Um, Justin and Kelvin Phillips Plantation, they're in Nieces, South Carolina. So I kind of go, depending on what I'm getting mounted, like Kelvin and Justin do all my deer type species. And then if I have like any kind of specialty odd stuff or, or bear or something like that, I take it up to... Blake and Upstate Taxidermy, and he does it. So really appreciate you guys watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And um, if you have any questions or anything below, or if you have any questions or anything, leave them below, and I'll be happy to answer. Have a good one. Thanks.